Okay, today we're going to look at the voting worksheet and you have in front of you here the table of votes that the alumni cast uh, for their favorite singer for the 10-year class reunion. And I'm going to go through the questions here one by one and try to supply you with the answers. The first question is simply how many alumni voted. And since each one of these columns represents a certain number of alumni who voted in that order, if we want the total number of votes, we simply add up the numbers at the top of the column, in which case we come out with 236 total votes. Question two says, who wins if we're going to use the plurality method? Now under the plurality method, all we care about are first place votes. So I'm just going to make a list here of our five candidates. We had Usher, Lifehouse, Blue Cantrell, Nelly, and Train. And if we want to get uh, first place votes only, all we care about is the first row here. Usher had these 28, but also these 52. So 28 plus 52 is 80 first place votes. Lifehouse had 38, Blue Cantrell had 43, Nelly had 75, and Train had 0. Thus, 80 is the largest number, and Usher would win the election for musical guest if we used the plurality method. Now we're on to the plurality with elimination method. And it's simply a round by round voting until one candidate receives a majority of the vote. So first thing we need to do is calculate what a majority consists of. There were 236 total votes. So if we take 236 and divide by two, we get 118. But to get a majority, we need to be exactly one more uh, vote than half. So 118 plus one is 119 and a majority in this case would consist of 119 votes. Okay, well the round one of the voting is simply the same thing as doing plurality methods. So we knew that Usher had 80 votes, Lifehouse had 38, Blue Cantrell had 43, Nelly had 75, and Train had zero. We need 119 votes for a majority. Nobody has 119, so we get rid of the lowest vote getter and start over. Well, Train is obviously the lowest vote getter. So in round two, essentially nobody really changes their vote because nobody voted for Train in the first place, so we have no votes to give to anybody else. So after eliminating Train, we still have nobody that has a majority, so we get rid of the lowest vote getter, which is Lifehouse with 38 votes. And so those 38 votes have to go to either Usher, Blue Cantrell, or Nelly. So look for Lifehouse here in the column. See, if those 38 people could not have voted for Lifehouse, they would have voted for Train. But Train's already been eliminated, so they can't have that choice either. So those 38 votes would have to go to Blue Cantrell. So Usher stays at 80. Blue has the 43 plus the new 38. Nelly has 75, so blue now has 43 and 38 is 81. We once again get rid of the lowest vote getter because still nobody has 119, so this time Nelly is out. And round four, we're just left with Usher and blue. Usher has 80, blue has 81, and now we've got to reassign Nelly's 75 votes. Here's Nelly 75. They can't go to Train because Train had already been eliminated, so they must go to Blue Cantrell. And we get 81 plus 75, which is 156, which is now bigger than 119. 
and so therefore Blue Cantrell wins the election. Now we proceed on to the board account method to determine who the winner would be if we use that method. We had our five candidates again. Usher, Lifehouse, Blue Cantrell, Nelly, and Train. And we're going to figure out a point total for them based on the position of their votes. So if we start with Usher, we go down here to the fifth place row, the bottom row, these votes will be worth one point each. And Usher had 38 and 75 more people give him fifth place votes, so that's 113 fifth place votes. Each one of those are worth one. Moving up one column, we see nobody put Usher in that row, so those votes would have been worth two. Up to the third row, we see that uh, 43 people put Usher in that category. Uh, to the second row, we have nobody. And the top row, we have 28 plus 52, which is 80 people, each of those worth 80, uh, each of those worth five points. So you see your numbers here in the board account should increase by one always. One, two, three, four, five. If we put all those into the calculator, do the math, we come out with a total of 642 points. Now I proceed with Lifehouse. Lifehouse has 28 and 43, which makes 71 last place votes plus 75 next to last place votes plus 52 third place votes plus no second place votes plus 38 first place votes type it in the calculator we get 567 total points blue cantrell 52 last place votes, each worth one. Zero next to last place votes. 38 and 75 for a total of 113 third place votes. 28 second place votes. And 43 first place votes, each of those worth five. So you get a total of 718 points. Nelly, nobody put Nelly in the last place. But we have 28, 38, and 52 more, which is 118 next to last place votes. No third place votes. 43 second place votes. And 75 first place votes for a total of 783 points. And last we have Train. Nobody voted them in last place, 43 people, next to last place, 28, in third place, and then 38 plus 52 plus 75, which is 165 people, put them in second, and nobody voted them first. Typing that all in the calculator, we get 830 total points. And according to board account method, the candidate with, with the most points wins. 830 is the most points. So therefore, Train wins the election by board account. Okay, the last problem on the first page, problem five, deals with pairwise comparison method. Who would win the election using the pairwise comparison method? Well, first we have to determine how many comparisons we need to make. There are five candidates, and so according to our formula uh, from the book, the number of comparisons is five times four divided by two, which is ten. Ten comparisons. So what are those comparisons? Well. Usher to Lifehouse, U to B, U to N, U to T. 
So that's all the possible comparisons of Usher to each one of the other candidates. Then I'll start with Lifehouse. We can compare Lifehouse to Blue Cantrell, Lifehouse to Nelly, and Lifehouse to Train. We already compared Lifehouse to Usher up here. Okay, now we'll start with Blue. We can do Blue to N and Blue to T. And then last, we just have N to T. That's the only thing we don't have. And those are our 10 comparisons. Now, the way pairwise comparison works is, for instance, with the first one, for comparing Usher to Lifehouse, we only care about those two candidates. It's as if they're the only two candidates running in the race. So in each column, all we care about is relative position of U and L. So for instance, in the first column, U is higher than L, so all 28 of these people prefer Usher to Lifehouse. In the second column, Lifehouse is higher than Usher, so those 38 people prefer Lifehouse better. The easiest way to do this, I think, is usually to just look for U, for instance. Okay, these 28 people like U better, so do these 43, so do these 52. So 28, 43, and 52 is 123. So 123 people prefer Usher over Lifehouse. Well, if there's 236 total voters, to figure out how many like Lifehouse better than Usher, we can just subtract 123 from 236, and we get 113. So Usher wins the comparison. U to B, uh, 28 and 52. Just those two columns like U better than B. That's 80. Subtract that from 236, we get 156. So B wins the comparison. U to N, first column and fourth column. So again, it's 80 to 156 and N wins the comparison. U to T, first column third column, and fourth column. So 28 plus 43 plus 52 is 123. We've already seen that above 123, so it's 123 to 113. U wins the comparison. Okay, L to B. Which columns have L ranked higher than B? The second column, the fourth column, and that's it. So 38 and 52 makes 90. We can find how many like B better than L by subtracting 90 from our total votes, 236, and we get 146. So 146 is the bigger number, B wins the comparison. L to N, um, second column, fourth column, that's it, 38 and 52. So once again, we have 90 to 146. N wins the comparison. L to T, second column, is the only column in which L is preferred over T. So we have 38 to 198. T wins the comparison. B to N, first column, second column, third column. 28, 38, and 43 is 109. We subtract that from 236. We get 127, N wins the comparison, B to T, first column, third column, has a B higher than a T, so 28 and 43 is 71. Subtract that from 236, we get 165, T wins the comparison, and lastly N to T. Um, third column. And last column, 43 and 75, which are 118. You subtract that from 236, you also get 118. So this is an example of a tie. These two share a half point each. So the last thing to do at this point is to count up total points for each of the candidates. So we have U, L, B, N, and T. U has two circles, so two points. L has no circles at all, so zero points. B, one, two. N, one, two, three, and a half. 
and t has one, two, and a half. Most points wins the election, so 3.5 is the greatest point total, and Nelly would win the election if we used pairwise comparison method. And notice here too that the two plus two plus three and a half plus two and a half adds up to 10. That has to work out every time you do pairwise comparison. Okay, problem six asks us to examine which of the voting methods, if any, fails to satisfy the majority criterion. Now, the majority criterion states that if any candidate receives a majority of first place votes, then that candidate should be declared the winner. So this can be a little tricky here. You have to look at this statement um, in its entirety. The hypothesis is very important here. It says if a candidate receives a majority of first place votes. Did that happen in this case? Did any candidate receive a majority of first place votes? And the answer is no. Remember, a majority in our case would have been 119. The most number of first place votes that any one candidate received from our earlier work we found out was Usher, and they had 80. So we didn't have a candidate who received a majority of first place votes, so it was impossible for any of the voting methods to violate the majority criterion. Even though these other election methods produced different winners than Usher, the majority criterion is not violated because no candidate received a majority of first place votes. So the answer is simply none. If you want to add the reasoning, because no candidate received a majority of first place votes, the majority criterion did not even apply. Problem 7 says which of the voting methods, if any, fails to satisfy the head-to-head -head criterion. So again, a careful reading of the head-to-head -head criterion is required, required here. If a candidate is preferred head-to-head -head over every other single candidate, then that candidate should be declared the winner. If we go back and consult our pairwise comparison data here, was there a candidate that was preferred head-to-head -head over every other single candidate? The answer is no. Nelly was really close. If Nelly would have had a 4 here, instead of splitting this vote with Train, then we could have said that Nelly was preferred head-to-head -head over every other single candidate. But because Nelly wasn't, then it doesn't matter what winners the other election methods arrive at, none of them violate the head-to-head -head criterion because no candidate was preferred head-to-head -head over every other candidate. So the answer to question seven is also none. So this brings us to problem eight. Which of the voting methods, if any, fails to satisfy the irrelevant alternatives criterion now that Blue Cantrell is no longer in the race. So we must examine whether or not the removal of Blue Cantrell from the possible candidates means that a different candidate would win the election if the same election methods were used. So for instance, we saw that Usher won by plurality method originally. If we take Blue Cantrell out of the race, does that affect the fact that Usher uh, would have won? And the answer is yes, it does affect it. If you look at your preference table here, if we remove Blue Cantrell from the race, basically we're eliminating all the Bs and moving everybody up, which means that these 43 people who originally voted for Blue Cantrell, they would have then voted for Nelly. So Nelly would have these 43 plus these 75, which would be more than Usher's 80, 
And so Nellie would win the election by the plurality method. Which means that the plurality method in this particular case would violate the irrelevant alternatives criterion. Or another way to say it is the plurality method would fail to satisfy the irrelevant alternatives criterion because a different winner was produced when we removed blue from the race. Okay, so you would also have to go back and examine the other methods. Well, since Blue Cantrell won the plurality with elimination election, she obviously can't win if she's been removed from the race, so that one also is going to violate because we're going to get a different winner than Blue. And then you'd have to check board account and pairwise comparison. I'm going to leave those two for you to examine, but basically you need to re- draw the preference table, moving everybody up and recalculating the points and board account because, for instance, if you remove B here, this is now a first place vote, this is a second, this is a third, and this is a fourth. And so you have to redo the board account and then redo the pairwise comparison as well without B as one of the choices. I'll go ahead and tell you, you can verify this on your own, that you actually still get the exact same winners in both board account and pairwise comparison as you did the first time with Blue Cantrell in the race. So only plurality and plurality with elimination, those are the only two methods that fail to satisfy the irrelevant alternatives criterion in this particular case.